Hey, I was just talking to um, Kyle about some of the cars uh, we need to get organised, um, particularly for the summer nets. Um, Mr PSI, I just wanted to get an update on that, and also the XR8 and um, Daniel's car. Just, I've got him ringing me, asking me about how that's going, if you can just uh, give me an update on them. OK, Mr PSI, we are hoping to get that on the dyno on Thursday, done a, uh, an oil change and a few bits and pieces, getting it ready for that. So that Thursday, I'll get on the dyno. Yep. Um, XR8, uh, Robbie's done a fair bit of work on that while George's been on holidays. When George gets back and do the roll cage and hopefully go out racing on the, on the weekend. Yeah, and you're back. busting the chops to get out there, mate. Oh, I know, so, I know. Uh, I got him into it, so he should be right. And Daniel's just got to uh, do that uh, transmission conversion. We've worked out most of the uh, the uh, stuff we want to do with it, so uh, it's on the hoist, ready to uh, measure up and do the, the uh, okay. All right. transmission. No worries. All right. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Um, I'm just adjusting the tappets up here on the Mr. PSI. Um, I'm just doing uh, some pre-dyno checks um, to make sure it's all good before we put on the dyno later this afternoon. And uh, the reason for that is um, things change and we haven't run it up for such a long time. It's good to check everything over, make sure everything's good before we do run it up. And uh, the, the exercise today is going to be to make sure we've got the same power as what we had uh, last time we ran it up. So we've got a good baseline to start with. And then from there we'll be playing with uh, cam timing first and, uh, and then maybe changing the camshaft to try and get some more power out of it. Now I'm just adjusting the uh, intake tappets to 10 thou and the exhaust tappets to 12 thou. Alright, and move on to the next one. Alright, what I'm doing here is tying the car down. Um, obviously a car with this much horsepower, like we're pushing for 2,000 horsepower, uh, it's very hard to make it, um, the tyre actually grip on the rollers. It's very easy to get wheel spin. So we've got to tie it down extremely hard in, into the, um, the front and rear roller. So what I'm doing first, I've got a, a chain, which um, is on a pulley system, um, which the pulley is down in between the, the rollers. And I'm just going to hook that over there. Um, now that chain is attached to the airbag system down here, um, which just pulls on the, it's got about 100 pounds of pressure pulling on the chain, which in turn pulls uh, on this bolt, which pulls the tyre down into the middle of the rollers. And we've also got uh, straps, which I've got a strap going through here, which is hooked onto one of the hooks, which is already on the car. Um, and that's to hold the, the car back into the rear roller. And on top of that, we might even run another strap um, down the ramps and over the front wheel to try and hold the car back. It's quite excessive, but that's sort of what you've got to do with a car with this much horsepower. If it was a uh, like a 300 kilowatt car or something, you you know you wouldn't need half this stuff. But something like this needs a lot of um, a lot of effort to hold it on the rollers. All right, I'm just setting the tyre pressures. Um, in shootout mode, you've got to have the tyre pressures at 40 psi. But um, I think I'll set them to 50 because in the past we've found the high pressures to be beneficial to um, minimise uh, tyre slip on the rollers. The next thing is to hook up all the, the sensors that uh, are fed through the dyno so I can monitor what's happening to the engine through the dyno. Uh, the first one is the boost pressure hose, the engine RPM, and also injector duty cycle, which um, is just basically the time the injectors are open versus the time that they're shut. And all this stuff um, just lets me monitor uh, everything through the dyno, which is very helpful after you've done a run. You can go back through it and see if there was any issues anywhere. All right, I'm going to give you a brief rundown on how the dyno works for those of you that don't know, don't understand how they work. Um, the main thing that you look at when you're drawing a graph on the dyno is obviously the power. Um, the, the red line there is the power curve. Now that is graphed uh, along the bottom here against road speed or RPM, whichever way you want to do it. Um, and the, the graphing on the side here is horsepower um, or, or kilowatts if it's in metric. Now 
Now you can graph it against a lot of things, like we've got torque in this case. In this example there is torque. But um, on a car like this, um, boost pressure is very important. So you can bring up the boost pressure. And you can see there, that's the boost pressure there. So it's got maximum boost at maximum RPM, 30 pounds of boost. One of the important things is the weather station. So what it does is it measures the, the temperature of the room, the humidity of the room, and the barometric pressure of the day, uh, which changes day to day with the weather. Um, it's a wireless weather station, so it's always um, you know, adjusting the, the temperature, uh, the barrow, and the humidity, um, which what that does is it changes the correction factor to keep the power consistent. So on a, an example would be on a zero degree day in the middle of winter to a 40 degree day in the middle of summer, You'd, you know, you should have pretty much the same power. This is a dual retarder dyno. It's got two retarders, one there and one here, uh, which can handle a lot of horsepower, um, which is an advantage of obviously over a single retarder dyno, which most shops have got. Um, what what this is here is the retarder, obviously. These two things are the, the rotors, uh, and the yellow things in the centre are magnets. It's called an eddy current dyno. Um, and what it basically does is the magnets control a load by um, you know trying to slow down these rotors um, and when they do that in, in turn the magnets this lever here which is attached to the magnets is forced down onto the load cell which is down here which it might be out of um, out of reach of the camera but uh, what that does is that the load cell is um, calibrated through the um, you know the, the computer within the dyno so the, the more this lever basically pushes on the load cell the more power um, is showing on the on the screen. Um, this is a hand controller, so I can pretty much control everything I need to uh, from inside the car. Some of the main functions is speed. Um, you can go up and down in 10 kilometre increments, one kilometre increments if you go side to side. So that uh, allows you to very accurately hold an RPM and load point, which is good for engine mapping. You can you know sit in the one load point and get your fuel right or get your timing right or whatever. So to do a basic power run, all you would do is um, get to the RPM uh, you want to start the run out, you hit load, hold your foot flat to the floor, wait a couple of seconds and then hit ramp and that'll, um, that'll run the car through a predetermined uh, ramp speed which is just how many uh, kilometres per hour per second uh, and you can adjust the speed of that. At the end of the run once you've got to where you want to back off, you back off and at the same time uh, hit the load hold button and that just holds a steady load to bring the RPM back down. There is a lot of other stuff in there that we use, but um, basically that's what we do. Dylan, what are you up to? I'm replacing the heat hoses on the fire wall. Like well, you make sure you get jack stands under there before you get back under it, all right? All right. Okay, never know jack stands.